What's up, Facebook Live? We are live now, so we just talked to Coach for a half second. Running just about a minute or two behind here. Let's make sure everything's coming through okay on our end, and we'll get Coach back on the phone. I think I created a new frame, too. It looks all kinds of high speed. I can hear you breathe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you good on your phones on the mobile? Yeah, so we're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we already got four people watching us. All right. Yeah, I'm one of them. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> it's like, hey, who watched you? Oh, my mom was one, and then. <laughs> All right, we'll get this recording started now. What is up, North Catholic fans? This is the Ryan Aiello Post Game Show. I am your host, Greg Schaefer, here with Will Havanis. What's up, dude? Hey, what up? You, you dry yet, by the way? No. Yeah, I don't think I am either. So in monsoon-like conditions, uh, North Catholic went down last night, 16-14 to Columbus Academy. Really, really hard-fought game. Um, before we get to on too much further here, we are brought to you, well, this show, the Ryan Aiello Post Game Show, is brought to you by the East of the Bend Podcast. All throughout the season, we're going to be providing you guys, North Catholic fans, with um, you know exclusive coverage throughout the year. Uh, we really feel like we haven't hardly—I mean, we scratched the surface a little bit. I shouldn't say haven't hardly scratched the surface, but um, you know the monsoon-like conditions, and then kind of figuring out our own way of doing things during the first game. Um, a lot of fun. Aaron, Aaron Shook, uh, North Catholic legend, Aaron Shook helped us out last night. So that's cool. He's part of the team. Helped us out tremendously. His notes were awesome, despite the fact they were soaked. Um, but yeah, so, uh, pretty cool, uh, getting to help you guys out. I hope you guys, uh, enjoy the content we got coming at you. Um, you know, we're going to try to cut that segment, the 60 second drive with coach ILO on the next show, which will be, well, on the next game that we're covering, which is in two weeks. Um, I'll say it now and I'll say it at the end of the show, but, um, yeah, we're not going to be at Watkins. I will be in South Bend doing a little bit of coverage, but mostly vacationing uh, for uh, Notre Dame and Vanderbilt. And speaking of that, if you guys uh, want to hang around, we got another show after this, the East of the Bend podcast, our original podcast. We're going to have uh, Chris Lee from uh, VandySports.com on with us. And uh, he's going to break down, you know, the Commodores. The guy's been covering the Commodores for like 20 years. So, uh, yeah, this guy is like the end-all, be-all, everything that is Vanderbilt. He started Vandy Sports as a publisher. He... Um, uh, you know, he does their podcast. Like, it's not officially, like, with the university, but it's with Rivals.com. So, with that being said, we will get Coach Aiello back on the phone. That's what everybody wants to see and hear, and we'll see if Coach has dried off or not. Hello? Hey, Coach Aiello, you're live on the Ryan Aiello postgame show. How's it going, man? Going well. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Good. Are you dry yet, by the way? <laughs> I am. Yeah. I am. Yeah, man. That was a hard fought game last night, um, 16 14. Um, you know, did the, I know we talked post game kind of immediately there about, um, you know, you, you know, the wet didn't really affect the game. Both sides, both sides had to play on the same field. But um, did, mm -hmm. the, did the conditions affect your game planning at all? No. I mean, we, uh, you know, obviously anticipated the rain, um, you know, Thursday, Friday, you know, so it kind of foresaw the weather coming in. So um, we knew what we wanted to do. I uh, had a good idea of what we thought we could do as well. Yeah. Did you guys, uh, so did you guys prep during the week? Uh, what kind of preparation did you do for the wet weather coming in? I mean, it, you know, there's nothing really we, we did, um, you know, really to simulate, you know, the wet weather and the wind there. Um, I mean, we really just tried to adjust our game plan uh, accordingly. You know, we wanted to get a little bit more run, get uh, run oriented, um, short passes, you know, that we, we were able to score one of our touchdowns off of those short passes. So um, just kind of the quick game and, and the run is really what we were trying to emphasize. So the game seemed like it was a pretty hard hitting game throughout. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I believe it was their first possession, they hit a screen or run to the left. I can't remember, but he, he took it for a big play and mm -hmm. took it like, I believe down inside the 10 and then you're held, your team held and uh, forced them to a field goal when it, it looked like they were, they had the momentum to get a touchdown. Um, mm -hmm. How that, how that make your defense feel at that point? 
Well, yeah, I, I'll tell you the one thing we were focusing on um, really coming out of last week is no, no matter what happens, we have to be in the moment. We've got to focus on each play as it is. Um, and, and, you know, again, starting the way we did isn't ideal. You know, they opened up with a 60-, 70-yard run, uh, but, you know, gra- captured that momentum, as you explained. Uh, but our task was to be in the moment. They didn't score, so we have an opportunity right now to make a statement, um, you know, on that next play. And our kids did that. You know, that that was a positive that we are going to take away from this game. Uh, you know, obviously the result is not the way we wanted it to be, but we've got to find those positives. You know, we wanted to focus on the run game. We got some production, a lot more so than what we happened, uh, what we received last week. So another positive that we can draw from all that stuff. But, uh, you know, wrap up to your question. I apologize for that. Um, you know, it's really just how do we stay in the moment of what is happening and executing to the best of our ability on that play? Yeah, I, I remember on that that stand too. It was like second or third down, and they tried to throw an out route, and your DB broke on it. And I thought for sure he had that pick, and it was open oh, space. I, <laughs> I, was, I was watching it on film this morning. I, I, I just I thought he had it too, uh, because he he would have had a nice opportunity to take that thing back. Yeah. Yeah, Coach, um, that seems to be a trend with your team. Um, you know, this year, that's one of the things I noticed, you know, I hate to be cliche about it, but a lot of bend but don't break, um, you know, especially mm-hmm. against Maysville. Um, uh, we weren't at Seneca, but uh, it looked like that was a defensive struggle as well and um, had some three and outs there. Um, and what kind of confidence do you feel in that unit then um, when, you know, you're getting that kind of stop? Yeah, we, we uh, you know, I'll tell you, we, we've been having some injuries that um, have affected us and where we're putting certain players. So, uh, we're not as consistent as where we want to be, but overall within the scheme, I'm very pleased with how our, our young men are executing. It's not perfect all the time. Again, things that we need to build off of, uh, but the scheme and, and the players, the, the guys are really starting to gain a little bit more confidence with it. We just can't give up those big plays. Um, you know, it, it's great to have those fourth down stands. I'd rather have that than a touchdown, but we've got to prevent um you know, that from happening in the first place, you know, you, you look at the end of the, the second quarter there, you know, 30 seconds left to give up that type of a screen class. Uh, I mean, very well executed by Columbus Academy, but those things just can't happen. I mean, we're three for three right now on uh, the past three games and, and giving up big plays right before the half. And we just can't give up momentum like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talk about that all the time since me and you've known mm-hmm. each other about the ebbs and flows of the game. And you know, it seemed like you guys have seized some momentum there with the uh, with the fumble recovery. But, you know, unfortunately, uh, Academy kind of took it right back going three and out and then yes. uh, led to points right there on the, you know, on that same drive. Uh, where was the mm-hmm. breakdown on that 20 yard run there, the first touchdown? Uh, yeah, the first touchdown, I, I mean, it was it was pursued angles. I, I mean, I, I know that's is, uh, you know, there's nothing too schematic about it, to be honest with you. I mean, we just uh, had a Mike linebacker, had a great run through on it, just didn't finish the tackle, uh, weren't strong at the point of contact on the perimeter, and, and didn't finish the play on the backside uh, with our safety run in the alley and then our backside pursuit. So, uh, again, well well designed and well ran by Columbus Academy. Again, it just came down to an execution um, play, and, and, and we didn't operate on that play the way we needed to. Yeah, and you guys you guys came right back, though. I mean, you guys got down double digits, and then, you know, 10 nothing. it's rainy. You know, the offense isn't really moving the ball, and theirs isn't either. So it's kind of like, you know, any it, m- many teams would, uh, would kind of, you know, hang their heads and pack it in. But on the very next drive, you guys go down and score. What was your message to the team right before that drive? You know, again, same thing, you know, that they, they have momentum right now. And we talked about this throughout the entire week. Momentum is going to go back and forth between football game. It, it is. Um, and, and so how do we focus on the play at hand and execute what we need to do? You know, we, we saw some things, you know, just based off of those first couple series, you know, where we, you know, kind of shot ourselves in the foot there with, with some penalties that took us behind. But we found some things that we thought we could expose based on what they were giving us. And, and our kids were able to go out there and execute that. Uh, you know, they were able to put the score behind them. They were able to to put all that stuff, what had happened prior to that behind them, and, and go execute that series. 
So it looked like in the last, uh, I think, minute of the first half, um, you guys were you were stopping them, and then there was a uh, a dropped uh, snap, I believe, so of what it was, and it looked like a fumble, and you guys pounced on it, and every you know everybody on the sideline was like, great, great, we got the ball now, and then the refs you know called it an incomplete pass, and the the play right after that they hit another screen and. Uh, they took it for a touchdown. What was the explanation that the refs gave you on that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, um, you know, I, I disagreed with that call <laughs> strongly. I think we um, all but, did coach. <laughs> you know, what, what, what those, you know, what, what they say is what they go with, you know, and the execution on that following play was not an example of, of what we needed to do. You know, we got caught up in the moment. We allowed that, um, that call to get the best of us and, and, and it prevented us from executing the way that we needed to. Um, to answer your question, they said it was a forward pass. Um, so it was an incomplete pass. He said there was forward momentum with the arm and therefore it was an incomplete pass. Yeah, that is an interesting explanation at best. Without, yeah. <laughs> with, without getting you in trouble, that's an interesting explanation at best. Let's put it yes, that way. Yeah. No, I, I – uh, I agree, but you know, again, those those things are going to happen. Those are not in our control. Yeah, you know, until high school gets gave replay. Gave up a big play and gave up a twenty yard play there to to put them up 10-0. That wasn't in our control there, you know. So we can't rely uh, on refs and, and calls to to dictate the outcome of a game. So that will never be an excuse for us. Mm -hmm. and then you know you go into halftime you know down um and then you know the defense again you know, i gotta tip my hat to you you are you've really coached this defense up you know you guys have only given up what is it about 49 points in three games i mean there's a lot of schools all over the midwest not even ohio that would kill for those kind of results um mm -hmm. you, so you're playing the field position game there in the uh, in the third quarter and then you go for a sneak of, i think it was inside the five on fourth down mm -hmm. um was there any hesitation to just to go for it there and was the sneak um, was that your call or was that a, a check at the line? No, no, that we, we did design that. That was a call for us. Uh, you know, the, the funny thing is, is that we were thinking about calling a timeout because we weren't sure if we were going to get that play off. Yeah. I seen you streaking um, down the sideline in your about one second in that <laughs> shot clock. So uh, that, that worked out to our advantage from that standpoint. Uh, but that was a design call. You know, we, we wanted to try to set a tempo, up front and you know we tried a jumbo set we had a third and one uh during the game as well that we didn't convert and, and it's really you know i i want to provide opportunities for, for our front to get something done um you know maybe that's the pride in me there but we have to establish a run game if we want to be successful moving forward and, and the only way to do that is to give them opportunities to to prove themselves um, so, you know, we, we lost the, the third and shorter, you know, um, in, in the field, you know, I think we were on kind of the minus 40 minus 45 there. Uh, but then we were able to execute in the goal line situation to get the touchdown. Yeah. I seen you streaking down with that four, three speed, trying to get your time out. It, <laughs> it was more so it was, uh, it was more one of those ones where the kid shoots it from half court and you're like, no, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Cause I'm like, he doesn't want that time out anymore. He's good. Uh, He's exactly good. Right. <laughs> So, Coach, when you were watching film today after the game, um, was there anything that you saw in the fourth quarter that, you know, you'd like to go back at and you think you, you could have taken advantage of it and uh, that you just kind of missed and, and looking back at it now, you know, hindsight tw being twenty twenty. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looking back at the film, you know, again, there was some execution stuff that, that we didn't operate um, correctly, you know. And, and, again, when when we don't – execute we're not going to be successful and that's what happened you know that it was a fourth down that we decided to go to where we're, i believe again i think we're in the plus 45 right there on the 50 um we we didn't execute that properly our, our spacing wasn't right the route concept was not correct and what we needed to do and, and that was a critical error for us because what happened there was about four minutes left um we we didn't convert on that fourth down we had to punt the ball away um, you know, they were able to convert one to keep that clock moving, which, which then gave us the ball at the end of that fourth quarter with, you know, what was it? I think it was just under a minute to go with zero, zero timeouts. And we were pinned back inside the 20. Um, so, you know, there, there was, there, there was some things that we need to, uh, clean up from an execution standpoint. I, I can't say from a call standpoint, um, you know, that I, I, I really felt that we were pretty good on 
how, what we were doing and how we were approaching the game plan. There's just some small things from an execution uh, part that we really needed to clean up. You know, again, our perimeter uh, blocking uh, is wide receivers. You know, that, that's got to be something that we clean up going into next week. We must get done uh, because we had some run plays there that, that could have busted for uh, much further than, than what they did if we would have gotten that perimeter blocking. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned that um, the second to last uh, possession there uh, on the plus 46. And was there any, uh, any you know, kind of thought in your mind to punt it away and pin them deep? Or was that a, you know, go for it 100% on that one? Yeah, again, I, I was uh, I was pretty confident that the, the play that we called, again, if we executed it, we were going to be okay. And, and again, we, we looked at film, uh, watched that today. And again, this will be a learning point for, for our young men moving forward. And, and how important understanding the play call is, what their job was within that play call is. Uh, because, again, they're going to kind of kick themselves in the butt there once they look at this. Because it was what we intended to run was wide open. You know, so uh, to answer your question, yeah. I, 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 you know, if I was to look at it knowing that, hey, we, we wouldn't convert, of course, I, I, I would have punted that. But we, we should have converted on that play. And, you know, I'll stand by, you know, what we decided as a coaching staff to call. So, Coach, I noticed when you guys throw the ball, um, you either roll the quarterback out and, and let him throw on the move, or you guys, you know, throw a quick, uh, quick screen or a quick out, or you guys throw the ball deep. Do you guys mm -hmm. ever? Do you guys ever talk about um, and, and listen to me? You know, being the great coach that I am, uh, <laughs> do you guys ever discuss you know crossing routes? Or I see them all the time in college and, and professional mm -hmm. footballs, and they always seem to come open. Yeah, you know, no, it, it's uh, a great question. You know, right now, I think we're still trying to find our identity um, up front in our pass protection. And in, until we, you know, identify those those right pieces and those right components and, and find the right guys that we need in there, um, you know, we're having to do some some different things to, um, you know, accommodate for some areas that, that we still need to have addressed. Right. So, um, you know, th those crossing routes are good. They, they are very beneficial, um, you know, with the coverage concepts that they're running to, you know, that they're more of a quarters, um, you know, man concepts is what they were looking at. So they're able to have some guys on some of those driving routes as well. And with the pressure that they were bringing, we, we knew we wanted to try to protect our quarterback a little bit more as well. And, and we knew that if we could get him out of the pocket, that would reduce the pressure in his face um, and we can make it more of a half line game for him. So, you know, to answer your question again, it was a combination of the pressure that they brought and what they did schematically um, as well as trying to find our identity in, in a pass rush, um, a pass protection, excuse me, standpoint. Yeah, Coach, so back-to-back, -back, you know, tough losses, but against tough opponents, this schedule is unfortunately not doing you guys any favors right now. It doesn't seem like, you know, you go down the schedule. It's like where there is no – there's no uh, weeks off. I wish I could say there's no ball states, but uh, you, your boys <laughs> gave us a run yesterday. Good <laughs> Lord. Hey, hey yeah. dude, I was, I was proud of my car. I bet, I bet. Um, but uh, how do you – you know, it, it, you know, sometimes this can go either way. You know, these tough games, they can build character and, they, you know, uh, build on them. And then when you play a team that is maybe at or below your level, you just wipe them off the field because you've been in those dog fights. But uh, how do you approach this week and keep a morale high during practice this week? Yeah, I think you said it, Greg. You know, it, it's we've got to focus on the positives. We've got to continue to build. That, that's the only way to handle this. You know, and, and we address that right away after the game. Um, not a great feeling, but we have to, we did some things better than what we did last week. And, and that's the mindset we need to continue to have, you know, it's unfortunate. I feel terrible for our seniors. Um, you know, this is, you know, their first and last home opening game. You, you know, always, always want to get a win at home. Right. Um, and, and so I feel terrible for them, but you know, we don't have a choice to take a step back. I mean, it's, it's get better. That, that is the only option in these situations. Uh, there are a lot of, situational stuff there's a lot of technique fundamental stuff there's a lot of schematic stuff that we can build on again going into this week and we're going to get that done mm -hmm. i will say one thing i got a compliment on is you know there's no way of not knowing it was raining yesterday but if you didn't know i tell you what the ball security on both sides was fantastic it wasn't like just fumble ruski out there or, mm -hmm. you know it, it was very nice um you guys do a lot of ball security drills at practice um you know with your running backs and skill players 
Yes, we do. I mean, it's a huge point of emphasis as we go throughout the week because, you know, that's, that's one thing we can't do. I mean, you want to talk about, um, you know, controlling momentum and keeping it on your side. That's one of the worst things that you could possibly do for your team. So that is a big emphasis uh, for us throughout the course of the week. Yeah, it was like I said, um, you know, back in my day, but you know, ten, fifteen years ago, it was like, uh, <laughs> it was like a game like that. I mean, it's going to end up about six to nothing, and there's going to be about fourteen fumbles on both sides of the ball. Just, mm-hmm. and I, I was really impressed actually on both sides. Uh, you know, even when guys, guys, you stacked up, you're ripping at the ball, and it was, you know, it didn't seem to phase the guys, which was very nice. Um, and that's something I feel like your skill guys can really build on moving forward. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I, I I take it you guys don't don't plan on relying any on any refs to say it was a forward pass. <laughs> say that again. I'm sorry. I, I I'm I'm thinking you guys aren't relying on the refs to say uh, it was a forward pass instead of yeah, a fumble. Exactly yeah. right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, again, you know, looking at that, what wasn't, I uh, wasn't too happy about it, but again, we can't put ourselves in that situation. So one thing we didn't touch on the last show and, um, it's been brought up to me. I, it, we've been kind of immersed in the, in the North Catholic crowd here and, and they're loving us. Uh, thank God mm-hmm. they're, they're accepting us. So, uh, that's good. <laughs> but, uh, here in, here in, yeah, they're awesome people. Uh, they op- accepted us with open arms, and uh, so I uh, just wanted to a- uh, ask about some of these injuries you guys had, and we've even noticed some of the guys on the sideline. And do you have any timetable for some of these guys to come back? Yeah, I, we. I'll tell you, things uh, are definitely going the right direction. Um, you know, our, our training staff has been doing a great job in working with these kids every single day to get them back on the field as quickly as possible. Um, you know, guys like Connor Heinerman, Julian uh, Brown. You know, hoping to get both of those young men back. Uh, you know, Granger Evans was a young man that we lost uh, right prior prior to the season starting. But, you know, he got a lot of playing time uh, last night and did a good job. You know, didn't plan on getting him as many reps as what we did, but um, he handled it very well. Uh, you know, we got another guy, you know, Derek Hawk, uh, Trey Tigner, you know, two young men that um, we were relying heavily on that, that, again, unfortunately received injuries prior to the season. Uh, we were optimistic that we'll get them back within the next couple weeks as well. Very nice. So, um, you know, on to Watkins, as somebody just uh, posted on the Facebook live feed here, and that's kind of where we're at is uh, on to Watkins. And they've had some stiff competition themselves, you know, outside of West. Well, outside of Whetstone, who's kind of perennially been, uh, you know, not not very good, always kind of down. But, I mean, Walnut Ridge and uh, Chillicothe, and, you know, Watkins is a significantly bigger school than NC. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, they're stepping up, and not only are they, are they stepping up to D2, or they're in D2 and they play D2 schools, but it's like, man, they're playing some of the better schools of D2. Um, yes, sir. So they threw the ball 36 times last week against Chillicothe. Is that kind of what their offense hangs their hat on? Um, yeah, they, they, they actually are a pretty, uh, pretty diverse offense as well. Um, most of these teams have been, they've been doing a very good job, uh, running the ball and passing the ball. You know, they, uh, it was a seven zero game through most of the first half, you know, so they were able to do some different things, um, you know, up front to stay in that game. And then they had to open up a little bit more as they got down in the second half there. Uh, but I, I'll tell you, they, they've got some uh, pretty good skill players. I think the running back does a great job. Up front, they're a big physical offensive line, uh, but they, they do run the ball pretty well. I, I, I really like that young man. He, uh, he runs very hard. Uh, and, the, and the quarterback, I think he's got a great arm. I, I think he sees the field very well uh, within their passing concepts. They spread the field very well. Um, so they're going to keep you honest. So out of everything that you see from them, what's the one thing that's going to keep you up at night? Is it their offense? Is it their defense? Is it their running game, their passing game? Yeah, they've got a couple of things. Again, anytime you got a team that, that wants to stretch you vertical, um, that's always going to keep you up a little bit, right? You know, just the isolation that, that they're going to put on some of your corners there. Um, you know, again, this this running back, when he gets into open space, um, you know, his, his vision, his ability to cut, he's got some big play potential. Um, on, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, they, they run a very unique style of, of defense, um, where, where they're bringing some different types of pressures and, and the um, edge and interior penetration that they get from their defensive line. Um, they, they, they bring it. They, they've got some physical young men uh, that, that come after that quarterback and, and can get into the backfield. So we've got to be great with our protection. Um, and they lock you up on the outside. They've got some disciplined secondary players um, that do a great job with, with their eyes and, and their feet. Um, and to, to enabling them, excuse me, to put pressure on you. 
Yeah, Coach, um, both teams coming in at, at one and two and a lot to play for. Um, you know, this is a rivalry game we hear, um, you know, that Watkins and NC are kind of a rival. And my uncle, he, he played for the 82 uh, state title team, kind of said the same thing. But uh, at one and two, um, you know, both teams coming in like that and not where you want to be. But do you see this as a crossroads game for both teams? Yeah, I don't know if it's a crossroad. You know, I, I'm a, a firm believer in just focusing on one week at a time. You know, we, we learn from what we've done in the past, but – that, that's not something we acknowledge moving forward because it doesn't matter, right? Um, so I, I don't think it's necessarily a crossroads. I think it's a big opportunity uh, being our first conference game in, in the LCL. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and again, just a great opportunity for both teams. And that was the nice way of saying this is going to be a really intense week of practice is what I hear. So, <laughs> so these boys, these boys better be ready to go. It's going to be intense regardless. Yeah, I believe that. I, uh, Will's still fired up from your pregame speech. Yeah, so. I don't know who you get your material from, but I'm ready to put some pads on. <laughs> yeah, like. we were we were stoked. I, 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 got, I still got to adjust a little bit because we got to make sure we got better outcomes coming in the uh, – the end of that fourth quarter no that was, a, that was a great effort last night you know you know didn't fall your way but you know um i'll make i'll probably talk about this in some later show you know later shows as well or maybe even later mm -hmm. on this one is just um you know 16 14 loss and it is disappointing it's not how the ilo era was supposed to start but it wasn't supposed to rain either so you know we mm -hmm. can't control some of these things but you know what this team lost 38 nothing to at a columbus academy last year so the growth mm -hmm. the growth is there you know and you know these guys got to trust the process fans players alike and you know we we see it because we are very privileged that you've let us um you know into practice and see the kind of the ins and outs of things and it's coming we can see it mm -hmm. coming um, so uh, I, I'm sure this that gives you a lot of confidence moving forward. It does. I, I mean, these these kids are bought in. You know, they're they're playing hard. It, it's just the small things. You know, I, I think that's why football is the greatest game there is because there, there's so many different components happening. Um, you know, with special teams, offense, defense, eleven guys doing their job. Um, it, it's just the greatest sport there is, and and we're just working on some of those small things. And once we get those small things. Uh, we, we will have something very special. Uh, we, we just got to get it done faster. You know, we, we got to keep shooting ourselves in the foot. You know, again, those penalties, you know, that that's just unacceptable stuff that can't happen. We have to be more disciplined than that. Um, you know, some of the execution up front, you know, again, I talked about the blocking on the perimeter. Those are just small details, uh, small fundamental things that we have to do right. Um, and, and we will get there. Very nice. Yeah, we're looking forward to it, Coach. Unfortunately, this will be our last week out. Uh, I'll be up in the, up at Notre Dame this week um, doing a little coverage of the Notre Dame Vandy, but mostly vacationing. But I got a couple hookups up there that I'm going to – I'm going to try to hone my craft. I'll try to be a better interviewer, I promise. So. Oh, no, hey, that, that'll be a lot of fun up there. <laughs> yeah, I was looking forward to it. So, Coach, uh, we will talk to you. I'll talk to you when I get home. Um, I will call you next Sunday We'll uh, we'll uh, off the air, and we'll just talk a little bit about what happened during the game and keep up with some yeah, things. Um, uh, shoot me an email, though. I need that roster. I know. I'm a pain, but I need the roster. Oh, no, <laughs> I, I will get it. I, I apologize. No, no don't, don't apologize. Uh, trust me, yes, that should be at the top of your priority list. <laughs> <laughs> So we, no, I'll, I'll get it to you guys for sure. Thank you, sir. And uh, you have a great rest of your weekend. Good luck this week. Uh, kick them boys in the butt for us. So uh, And get them, get them rocking and knock, knock the Warriors out this week. Thanks for your time yep. again, Coach. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you both. Really do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Have a good one. Bye. Right, take care. All right, guys. That is this week's edition of the Ryan ILO post game show. Any final thoughts about the game, Will? As you're still drying off over there? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm still wet right yeah. now. Um, yeah, I just I feel like that the kids, like he said, they really are buying in. Um, you know, you see it in the fourth quarter, even in, in this game. You know, they're down, but they're still. You know, they're talking on the sidelines, getting excited. Somebody makes a play. They're all in it. You know, guys cheering up their their buddies and everything like that it's not like they're just sitting there like oh here we go it's another loss mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's something you know we've been invited to and not to call anybody out i mean it, take it ever how you want to but we were invited to all kinds of practices um, leading up to some of our coaches special shows we only did three of them um but uh you know we we had some people want us to come out that we weren't able to get on but we we showed up at some practices and you know what we didn't see at some of these practices what we're seeing with north catholic and what we're seeing on the sideline and the mentality and it's there and you know 
if you know we don't stream live pregame speeches we want our um, the coaches to be able to speak freely um, we don't want to worry about that and we do get did you, hopefully did get you some good content that you enjoyed yesterday and we'll continue to do that going forward but you know if you can hear some of these pregame speeches he gives these aren't just breaking a tape against the wall and just being mad this is like this is good stuff and you know coach knows what he's doing we see the operation on the inside and uh, I'm really confident in going forward. I think, um, like I said, um, last year they even, they beat Watkins at Watkins 15-14. So tough game. And if they can just build on what they have going right now, um, you know, it's clearly there. You know, last year they got beat by Maysville 27-16 at home. This year they go down and beat Maysville. Last year, again, like I said, they lose to Academy 38 to nothing at Academy. This year they lose by two in horrible conditions. With a chance to win it. With Absolutely. With a chance to win it. And then, you know, we can talk about – he can't talk about it, but we can. That was a fumble. <laughs> well, and that wasn't it. That wasn't the only one. There were a lot it of was questionable calls. The one late hit you got on your camera um, was – It was yeah. it was, it was was iffy at best. Yeah, iffy at best. It was a 2018 late hit, if I can get away it. With was it was like a 2020 late oh, hit. Oh, okay. So we're <laughs> – like what the NFL is going to go to and what college football is going to yeah. go to. I mean, the guy hadn't even landed on the ground. Yeah, the guy running back, he put it in perspective, the guy, he had, Will has a picture of it. The guy's going to the ground. He's not down yet. The NC tackler is getting – yeah, that's why I need the roster right there. The, the NC yeah. tackler is uh, – I mean, he's already in his motion to tackle. He's kind of in the air, if you will, as well. And mm -hmm. they, you know, they called the flag. So, yeah, there was a few things like that that happened last night. Um, so yeah, great game. Um, unfortunately didn't come out on the right end. 16, 14 again, uh, Columbus Academy takes it a hard fought battle. Um, and these are bigger schools too. Um, no excuses, but, um, you know, coach Ayala is going to get these guys on the right track, you know, get some of these victories against some of these bigger schools and just see how the season pans out. Playoffs are definitely not out of the question. Even at one and two, you got a division two school coming to town this week. So, uh, yeah, a lot of points sitting out there for them. So uh, really excited about that. It should be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, once once these kids just learn how to win, I know it, it's hard to say, but if you've ever played sports before, you you know what I'm talking about. When you just learn how to win, mm -hmm. these guys, man, watch out. Yeah, yeah. Once they learn how to win, there could be there could be some upsets on the other side. Yeah. Because I I heard amongst some people that there's some games. Ah, oh, we're gonna lose that one. Ah, not so fast. Not so fast, my friend. Yeah. Even if you <laughs> Lee look Corso, at my pencil here. Even if you look at Columbus Academy last night after they shook hands and they were excited it wasn't just like oh yeah we came out we got another win yeah, it was did. like it was almost like they upset yeah absolutely and, yeah and they're a bigger school so you know that's that says a lot it does that says a lot so again uh, until next week let me reset this because that was way too quick uh, let's see next week we're out no shows at all next week no East of the Bend podcast I'm actually I'm taking a vacation actually <laughs> Um, I'm giving this guy a vacation as well. It's actually his daughter's birthday. That after the next show, I hope you guys stick around. Chris Lee from VandySports.com is going to come on with us, and uh, we're just going to interview him and break down. We're not talking about that Ball State mess yesterday. We're going to talk about Notre Dame and Vandy, um, and that's pretty much it. But hopefully you check that out. But we will be again at Licking Heights in two weeks. I heard there's some – Girls, you may know cheerleading at that game. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be an interesting game for me. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting game for Will. So, uh, yeah, my my daughters cheer for Licking Heights uh, for fifth grade and third grade, and uh, I think this is Licking Heights homecoming game. Oh man, this so, is going to be fun. Yeah, I, I might. I, yeah, I might. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do like one of those those parents that has like the split shirt. Yeah, <laughs> one of each. Oh, you're going to Brady Quinn, uh, Brady Quinn's sister. And I love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. All right, guys, two weeks from now, East of the Bend podcast will be um, covering the game at Licking Heights. That's a Friday night at 7 p.m. Um, and then on Sunday, two days later, you guys have the schedule. Let me bring it up before I let you go. That is the 21st is the game at 7 p.m. The 23rd, Sunday at 5 p.m., we will be back with uh, the Ryan Aiello postgame show. Until next time, go Wave.